Welcome back to Tarot by the Bay. I'm David. Okay, so this is going to be another part, partly covering the Trump trial. Um, some testimony from Michael Cohen that I had not heard before that was interesting. And that was something about Michael Cohen stealing thousands of dollars from Trump Org. That sounds tasty, doesn't it? So it involves a company called Red Finch. So Donald Trump was... They were doing a poll on America's most influential businessmen, which I can imagine had no Warren Buffett at the top of the list, say. And Donald Trump was languishing, like in the number nine or ten position, and he didn't like that. So uh, Cohen found this company, Redfinch, that <laughs> would basically set up all these bot accounts to p boost up Donald Trump's numbers on this poll of most influential businessmen in the United States. That I'm going to explore into that because, you know, about these polls here, hmm, makes you wonder. Um, Donald Trump has no problem manipulating polls to feed his ego. That's going to be one a part of this. But, okay, so Cohen... Um, and this company agreed it was going to be, uh, be paid $50,000 for its efforts. Well, the efforts didn't really meet Donald Trump's expectations, and he didn't want to pay him. Um, the bill was $50,000. Cohen gave him $20,000 in cash in a brown paper bag. Because nothing says my payment's on the up and up like paying it in a brown paper bag. <laughs> haven't we all been paid twenty thousand dollars in a brown paper bag i'm just laughing because now i'm thinking about the bob menendez things and don't we all have gold bars lying around in our closets and tens of thousands of dollars rolled up in, in our suit pockets jacket pockets pairs of boots in the garage duffel bags Dear God. Um, so Cohen paid these guys $20,000, but then he billed Trump Org the full $50,000, saying he paid them the full fifty, and he wanted to be reimbursed for it. And Trump Org paid him the $50,000. The the lawyer, this is the prosecutor, said, you do know that's a crime, right? And he goes, yes, I admit that is a crime, and I, I own that, and that was revealed to the prosecutors. So, you know, again, damage control here. Um, now, the thing that's funny about it, it was his justification for it. His justification was that he had been stiffed and shorted on his, um, on his bonus that year. Uh, and the quote goes, why did you take that extra 30? Cohen responded that he was angry that his bonus had been reduced that year and asked for a larger, larger reimbursement it was almost like self-help. When Miss Hoffinger asked if he understood what he did was wrong, Cohen responded that he did. Okay, so first off, that's some legit testimony here. Oh, Nico doesn't want to be part of the, the film anymore. Poor kitty. Um, you know, th they caught him stealing tens of thousands of dollars. That could really undermine your credibility with the jury, except for the fact that he owned it. And then he explained why, that he had been stiffed on his bonus. Now, mind you, in a previous re... In a, previous article I had read, when they discussed, when the, I think it was during cross-examination, and they discussed how he got stiffed on his bonus, or maybe it was during direct, when Cohen described being stiffed on his bonus, Donald Trump, who had, who had his eyes closed, smiled. Like, yeah, you. I, I got over on you. I think Donald Trump finding out that Michael Cohen stole from him and got his bonus back probably irritated the hell out of him. <laughs> And I'm sure Cohen knew it would if he did something like that. So I want to look at a couple of things. So I want to look at Cohen's do-it-yourself instant bonus and how that's going to impact the case with his credibility. I'm going to want to read on how did Trump feel about finding out when he found out that Cohen had stiffed him for $30,000. And then I want to find out about Donald Trump and polls and uh, using his wealth to skew polls. Because one of the things that's got a bunch of people really anxious around here, as I move my camera a little closer, is how, you know, Biden's down in the polls or they're neck and neck or Trump's ahead. 
how do you know these polls aren't being, you know, manipulated with money? We have no idea. We trust that the polls are accurate and they may not be. And if you start thinking that polls can be influenced with money, that might explain why what you feel is true and what's being reported is true aren't lining up because there's a key assumption that needs to be changed and that these polls aren't fixed and rigged. Come on down. Entertainment purposes only. Michael Cohen, <laughs> do it yourself. $30,000 bonus. How's that going to impact your credibility with the jury? Entertainment purposes only. Uh, my card should be all the way right up. On my last reading, uh, Nico had jumped up and I dropped my deck and <laughs> the cards are flying all over the place. Page of Wands. Um, he explained what he did and why he did it. Now, if you want to read that as an upside down, um, his explanation may have fallen flat with some of the people on there because being a thief is being a thief no matter how you justify it. It wasn't, you were wrong to do it and um, uh, and take that money, no matter how you rationalized it. So he probably lost credibility with some folks in the jury because of that. Will that be enough to undermine the case? Probably not. There's too much other, with the money stuff and him being reimbursed, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, and, and he also testified that all the reimbursement payments he did he never submitted uh, any legal invoices because there were never any legal work done. Cross with the judgment. Yeah, you know, he tried to explain what he did. I think others are going to sort of say like, hey, I get why he did what he did. There might be a couple people that are like, you know, that was wrong and the prosecution should go after him for that too. You know, the Trump, Trump org should file charges against him for that theft and he should be held accountable for that. And they wouldn't be wrong. Underneath it all is the Empress, though, asking how he impacted the jury. The jury's still going to take all the evidence in. So, you know, these actions of his are going to impact the jury's decision. But is this a big impact? I'm not convinced. In the past, you got the Ace of Wands, you know, strong action. I think overall, Michael Cohen was a strong witness <clears throat> and you know, and I say he followed Stormy Daniels' lead, but there was a theme that Michael Cohen had that Stormy Daniels had, and that's owning your behaviors. That's not lying to the jury with what you did. It's owning it, saying, yeah, I did it. <clears throat> Do I have regrets? Sure. But I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to own it. Stormy Daniels was much less of a victim uh, complex than the way Michael Cohen's being portrayed. But Michael Cohen 2024 is different than the Michael Cohen leading up to um, that was being uh, involved in all, in all these uh, processes here. Uh, he was much more of a victim person until he really was victimized and thrown in prison and then thrown back in prison during COVID when other folks were getting released. At that point, um, once he got his podcast, his Mia Culpa podcast, He's out there blazing a new trail, and he's now very well taken care of. He doesn't need to take Donald Trump's money or anybody's money. He's out there earning bucks with his podcast here. How did he impact the uh, the trial, the uh, the jury? Uh, current situation is seven of wands. The jury is, again, they're going to take into account all the actions. Look at all these action cards here. They're going to take it. All, all the good actions, all the bad actions, everything's going to be weighed. Um, I honestly think that Michael Cohen's credibility is way more positive than negative with the jury. Overarching energy is the Page of Pentacles. I think the jury understands why he took money that didn't belong to him. And some, again, like this one, some might be empathetic that, you know, Donald Trump screwed everybody and he's screwing this guy too. And this guy got clever and fought back and got it. Others are gonna say wrong is wrong, you shouldn't have done it. But I think generally speaking, it's gonna they're gonna give him a pass on this one. <laughs> Lesson to be learned. Stealing doesn't pay, except in Trump world, 
it's honestly, it's I'm laughing because it's like you know, it's a theft card. Michael Cohen th- uh, stole from Donald Trump, who steals from everybody else. It just goes to show the old adage: "There's no honor amongst thieves." Is so true, and like attracts like. Donald Trump attracts sharks. Donald Trump is a shark. He doesn't you know. He he he's a bully. He doesn't pay his bills. He takes advantage of anybody smaller than him, and the people that are around him are the type of people that can hang around with that personality. So you have to be careful when you're Donald Trump because you sign your you you basically surround yourself with a bunch of little mini Trumps, and they will do to you what you do to other people. They will get your trust and then you know take advantage of your trust, and it's funny. You know, Michael Cohen could be a lot more like Donald Trump, you know, bombastic and all that. But the one person who's most like Trump, who's not in this court case, is Ivanka. And Donald has said that Ivanka is the one most like him. So in my reading the other day when I was talking about the Trump spawn, who's the one most likely to turn Trump over to save their own butt? Don't put me in jail Put him in prison. I will give you everything you need to put him in prison as long as that means I don't have to go to prison. It's also the same person who's got way more money than anybody else in the family, including her father. (laughs) Lesson we learned is the King of Swords from all this. Um, The jury will decide. The jury's going to decide. I don't think Michael Cohen's uh, actions had a big impact they'll have an impact on his reputation uh the jury may not be inviting him over for dinner parties anytime soon may may not trust him (laughs) with hey i got this ten thousand dollars in this briefcase could you go deposit it for me in my bank account they may not be asking him to do that anytime soon but i don't think um i don't think it, it undid his credibility i could be wrong it could totally undermine his credibility but you're talking one action with a justification for it. Yeah. Okay. How did Donald Trump feel <laughs> about this when he found out? Now, I don't, I don't know if he found out in court or if he found out a while ago. But um, and maybe that's why he smirked because he knows that Michael Cohen stole from him and that he stole from Michael Cohen. So... <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, I got you first, or I got you more type of thing. But how, how did Donald Trump react when he found out that Michael Cohen had stolen $30,000, just took him for a $30,000 ride, $30,000 bath? You know, mind you, this is the same guy that was going to make Michael Cohen take a $130,000 bath. Just like he did, didn't pay AMI, David Pecker, National Enquirer, he was going to pay Michael Cohen. So Michael Cohen paid him back. <laughs> How did Trump react to it? <laughs> Two of Pentacles. Why do I think you win some, you lose some is not the is not the Donald Trump motto. Um, turbulence in the background at discovering the loss. Oh, I'm sure he was not happy about it. And of course, it's going to make him wonder when, what else, when else did Michael Cohen steal from him? And then, then how do I get him back for this? Now, when he found out, I'm sure revenge was the, with the, the first two things on his mind were, oh my God, how much money did he steal from me? When did he steal from me? How much has he stolen from me over time? And how do I get, get back at him? You know, disloyalty. He's kicked, got to kick Michael Cohen out of the Garden of Eden. If nothing else, we need to send him up to the uh, to the afterlife here. Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, here's here's the how many times has this guy screwed me over? I was such a fool. In I was so in love with him. We were so in love with each other, like him and Kim Jong Un. How could he take advantage of me like that? Of my generosity and my loyalty and all that. Oh, and Michael Cohen's the drama queen? <laughs> In the past, the Ace of Wands. Um, so when he first found out, he was livid. This is passion. Where's my club? I'm going to go beat this guy to death <laughs> type of thing. And 
he's still upset about it. <laughs> Don't let the, you know, he's still upset about it. And if he could do something about it, he would. He still wants to take action. Fiery passion in action. Fiery passion in action. This guy stole money from me. He's probably stolen a lot of money from me. After all I did for him. You know, victim, victim, victim. He's the, uh, he's the uh, betrayed, <laughs> betrothed. <laughs> Overarching energy is the devil. Yep, go figure. Um, <laughs> betrayal is a one-way street in Trump land. And how dare Michael Cohen try and, you know, get his due from the devil. The devil will decide when you get your due. And the, the answer is never. So I was mentioning how um, like attracts like. Michael Cohen, Donald Trump, two peas in a pod. It's just That's just who's there. That's who's there for all these things. Lesson to be learned is the Ace of Cups. Um, strong emotions. You got the Ace of Wands, the Ace of Cups. Again, keeping your emotions under control and, you know, going with your base emotions here. I don't think Donald Trump's learned his lesson on this one. He, again, if Donald Trump got a sniff of power, if he got to be president again, Michael Cohen would probably be arrested and put in front of a firing squad. He would be one of the first to do that because Trump's still pissed. Trump doesn't like losing to anybody. Outcome is the king of pentacles. Um, <coughs> you know, in the end of the day, it's 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 Trump change, or Trump change as the case may be. But he's a miser. This guy's an absolute miser, and literally, <coughs> excuse me, got a little congestion in my throat there. Literally. Any amount of money taken from him makes him live it. There was that whole thing in the, um, there was that whole thing in the, uh, uh, the testimony with the, uh, the publisher talking about his book about penny pinching and some group sent 50 cent checks, uh, to Trump org and Trump org cashed the check because Donald Trump's like, you know, counting pennies is what makes you millions. That, that type of thing. He's just a miser. And, you know, this $30,000, again, he would look at Michael Cohen and he should be summarily executed. And all his belongings should become Donald Trump's belongings because you have to send a message, eye for an eye and all that. There, there's, no, there's no measured response from Donald Trump. He would kill a mosquito with a flamethrower. When a fly swatter would do. Because screw that mosquito and everything around it because it might kill the mosquito family and all the other insects that ate and abetted that mosquito. <laughs> all right, um, switching gears. Polling. We talked about Redfinch. And we talked about um, uh, Trump using Redfinch to try and skew a poll, a popularity poll. For God's sake, how thin-skinned is this guy? Very, is the answer. Um, political polling with Donald Trump. Tell me, give me the energy around political polling and manipulations when it involves Donald Trump and polls. <sighs> that card was on the bottom. <clears throat> Making deals. Coming to agreements. Yep. Okay. And evaluations, you know, how much money do I need to pay? How do I, uh, how do I improve my value, my worth, <clears throat> and judgment? So you can think of the judgment as this is going out and, and, and polling people. And, you know, Donald Trump loves polls. He always talks about polls. You ever notice that? My poll numbers are great. My poll numbers are better than Biden. Don't believe those fake polls. We've got a poll coming out. No, those other polls are fake, which is telling you that the other polls, when he says they're fake, they're just not giving the answer he wants. So he's got his own polls that gives the answers that he wants, and he wants you to believe. 
believe my polls. Don't believe what your lying ears tell you here or what your lying eyes show you. Only believe what I tell you. He literally is the snake on the apple tree there. Past Nine of Swords. Yeah, it, uh, he he's he has a lot of anxiety when he's not the most popular kid on the block or when his popularity is waning it keeps him up at night it keeps him rage tweeting at two or three in the morning so um polls are important to him it's like it's almost like again his 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 net worth is equal to his self-worth and he needs that validation through polls, just like he needs that validation in the Fortune 400. You know, the top 400 wealthiest people. His ego absolutely requires that he be on there, which is why he would have Michael Cohen and Alan Weisselberg cook the books or come up with fake numbers to get him on the, uh, the Fortune 400 list. That's, that's just who he is. So to... To stave off his anxiety, you know, he comes to agreement, throws some money to make movement on those poles in the direction that he wants them to move into. Overarching energy is the king of swords. He doesn't care that other people might use this pole for information. It's To him, it's a black or white issue. <laughs> Literally, black and white issue here. He has to be the top of the poles. He just has to be. And... He doesn't care how he gets there. His rightful place is on the top of the poles, and any result that is short of that is a failure on somebody's part. Not his, somebody else's. And you know, by hook or crook, when you get that done and he gets to the top of the poles, then he's happy. All's right in the world. Everybody can celebrate because Donald Trump is the winner again. Here's that thing, you know, even Mary Trump said this. He hates losing. He has to be a winner at everything. Even if he's like the only person who plays in a, in a golf tournament, he's he'll do that if that's the only way he can guarantee a win. And then he moves on to the next one. After he gets his polls manipulated, he moves on to the next thing. And then we go through it all over again. Do not believe polls. Polls can be manipulated. They can be manipulated by the questions they ask, the order by which they ask the questions, how they ask the questions or how the questions are worded, who they're contacting. You can get a bias in there. There are all sorts of things. Ignore the polls, all right? There, the polls have been skewed since 2016. Linda G., just has that as a mantra of hers and she'll always bring up that hillary was ahead in the polls and uh mitt romney was ahead of the polls over obama and you know um all these all these different polls that don't make any sense ignore them get out and vote ignore what they say tell you you know watching left-wing media lose their mind over cross-examination over michael cohen it's just so disappointing you try and get your media from multiple sources. Um, you can go ahead and do it left wing or right wing, depending on how you'd like to spice your stories. But go to NPR, go to BBC, go to um, AP News, go to Reuters. Um, even the, the big markets like ABC, NBC, CBS are pretty good. But those first four I listed tend to be high up on the list of, of truth and honesty. And they really tone down the adjectives. Get some news from there so you've got the facts. And then you can go to your favorite news source and see how they spice it up for you. I, I, I shared the story a couple of times. My brother had tried watching Fox News and he was just laid out by just how unfactually accurate they were in covering stories where he knew the basic facts of the story. The spin they put on it was amazing. But it's why you don't get through to uh, the Fox viewers and such, because they are just fed a steady stream of this stuff and they believe it. So they truly believe that Democrats are evil and are trying to uh, destroy the country. And that uh, they will cheat, lie and steal and do everything they can to do this. They truly believe it because that's what they're told and that's all they ingest. 
If you only ingested red dye number five in every meal, eventually you're going to turn red too. I don't know what to tell you. Don't believe the polls. Get out and vote, okay? We will get through this. Um, lastly, I um, want to say thank you for your support on this channel. In the community page, I put a link to my other two channels. You have Tarot of the Seven Seas, which is my international channel, focusing mostly on the EU, as well as Twin Tarot with Gary and David. That is a channel that my brother and I just started, my identical twin brother, older identical twin brother, Gary, um, where we take news like we do on this channel and then just add even more snark because you got the two of us, like a pair of talking magpies uh, going off on the subject matter, building things up, uh, laughing sarcastically at ridiculous statements and just generally having a good time. It's fun time overall. So if you want some international news, go check out Tarot of the Seven Seas. If you want a good laugh, to go with your news, come check out Twin Tarot's with uh, Gary and David. Thank you very much for supporting my channel and getting these uh, videos out to other people so that they can enjoy the fun too. Take care. I'll catch you on the next video.